Welcome to my CBSC English teacher. Today let's look at the line by line explanation of the second part of the chapter, the interview from class 12 English. If you're watching my video for the first time, consider subscribing. You can listen to the explanations of lessons from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. So in the first part of the chapter we saw various opinions of famous people about what they felt about being interviewed now today we we'll look at the second part of the lesson and it is an interview itself the interviewer is mukund padmanabhan from the hindu and the interviewee is umberto eco a professor from the university at baloni in italy The following is an extract from an interview of Umberto Eco. The interviewer is Mukund Padmanabhan from the Hindu. Umberto Eco, a professor at the University of Bologna in Italy, had already acquired a formidable reputation as a scholar for his ideas on semiotics, literary interpretation and medieval aesthetics before he turned to writing fiction. This interview took place during the year 2005. during which mukund was working for the hindu newspaper and the interviewee is none other than umberto eco who was a professor at the university of baloni in italy now he was well known as a scholar and for his ideas on semiotics semiotics is nothing but the study of science he was also well known for his literary interpretation that means he was able to give excellent explanations on any piece of literary work he was also well known for his appreciation of medieval aesthetics medieval aesthetics is nothing but a general philosophy of beauty during the medieval period so he turned to writing fiction only after a certain age he was also known for his literary fiction academic texts essays children's books newspaper articles etc his written output is staggeringly large and wide ranging so he had written a lot of articles and fictions and essays and books for children and it is astonishing to see the number of books or articles that he had written on a wide range of topics In the year 1980 he became an intellectual superstar after writing a book called The Name of the Rose and which was published so the copy sold at least more than 10 millions in number so after this he became a real intellectual superstar So now let's look at the interview itself Mukund the English novelist and academic David Lodge once remarked I can't understand how man can do all the things he does so Mukund is asking Umberto Eco that he could not understand when the English novelist and academic David Lodge once remarked he just said that he was not able to understand how this man that is Umberto Eco was able to do all these things or so many things at one time So Umberto Eco replies maybe i give the impression of doing many things but in the end i am convinced i am always doing the same thing so when he was asked a question by Mukun like how is able to do so many things Umberto Eco humbly replied that he may be giving the impression of doing many things that means people may think that he is doing many things but he says that finally he is convin- convinced and he is always doing the same thing Mukund which is so Mukund wanted to know what is that same thing he is always doing Umberto Eco ah now that is more difficult to explain i have some philosophical interests and i pursue them through my academic work and my novels even my books for children are about non violence and peace So Umberto Eco replies that it's very difficult for him to explain how he is doing the same thing all the time but he says that he has some philosophical interest and he brings in his philosophy through his academic work and his novels and he also says that he writes books for children which are mostly about non-violence and peace 
you see the same bunch of ethical philosophical interest so he says that he has the same bunch of ethical ethical is nothing but moral principles and philosophical interest whenever he writes and then i have a secret he says that he has a secret which is also giving him his uh, victory or name or fame or whatever did you know that what will happen if you eliminate the empty space from the universe so he says that the whole world is like an element where the molecules are stuck together and between the molecules there are empty spaces so he says that if you eliminate the empty spaces in all the universe will become as big as my fist so he says that if you remove all the empty spaces the whole universe will only be as big as his fist similarly we have a lot of empty spaces in our lives too so he says that in our life also we have a lot of empty spaces i call them interstices so he is calling the empty spaces interstices say you are coming over to my place you are in an elevator and while you are coming up i am waiting for you so here umberto is trying to explain what an interstice is or what an empty space in our life is so he is saying that suppose somebody is coming over to his house and he is waiting for him this is an interstice an empty space so that time of waiting he is calling it as an interstice or an empty space i work in empty spaces so he says that he uses that time or that empty space that he finds while waiting for somebody etc while waiting for you are elevator to come up from the first to the third floor i have already written an article So Umberto says that when he is waiting for somebody to come up to his house in the third floor using the elevator he uses that waiting space or empty space to write an article so that is how he efficiently uses the empty space or the interstice what he calls and writes an article and uses that time very effectively Mukund not everyone can do that of course So Mukun says that not everyone can do what he does like using the empty spaces. Your non-fictional writing, your scholarly work has a certain playful and personal quality about it. It is a marked departure from a regular academic style. So now Mukund is talking about his non-fictional writing. What is non-fictional writing? It could be some uh, article or a thesis or something which is not a story. So he says that all his non-fictional writing has a different style compared to the normal academic style. So he says that it has a very playful way and it has a very personal touch. So it is very different from the normal academic style written by other people so mukund is of the opinion that the academic style used by other people are often depersonalized that is there is no personal touch at all and it is dry and boring have you consciously adopted an informal approach or is it something that just came to you naturally so he's asking umberto eco whether he has adopted this particular style that is of being playful and personalized whether he has adopted it in a willful manner or whether it has come to him naturally whether his way of writing is such that that it is very personal and playful umberto eco When I presented my first doctoral dissertation in Italy one of the professors said scholars learn a lot of a certain subject then they make a lot of false hypotheses then they correct them at the end they put the conclusions dissertation is nothing but a long essay usually presented by candidates after doing a lot of research to get their university degree so here when umberto eco submitted his dissertation a professor told him that usually the scholars make a lot of false theses they correct them at the end and put some kind of conclusion also
you on the contrary told the story of your research so the professor was of the opinion that umberto eco was able to tell the story of his research that means what and all steps and how he did the research even after including your trials and errors so the professor said that he even included his trial and errors trials and errors means all the mistakes that he did and how he was able to correct them in the story of his research at the same same time he recognized i was right and went on to publish my dissertation as a book which meant he appreciated it so the professor was also able to recognize that umberto was right in his method of doing the research and he was very happy that he published his dissertation as a book which means he also appreciated his work At that point at the age of 22 I understood scholarly books should be written the way I had done by telling the story of the research so when Umberto Eco published his work he was only 22 years old and he says that that was the best way of writing the essay and he said that he was correct in telling the story of his research this is why my essays have always a narrative aspect so because he wrote it in the form of a story he says that his essays are always having a narrative aspect narrative in the sense it looks like a story and this is why probably i started writing narratives so late at the age of 50 more or less so he says that he understood the meaning and importance of the narrative aspect and he started writing novels after the age of 50 I hope you like today's video. For more interesting videos, do subscribe to my CBSC English teacher. I will be doing the last part of this lesson in my next video. Please like, share and give your valuable comments below. Thank you for watching.